that sound familiar? Have you ever wondered how the tornado sirens work? Well, I'm here at the Mount Clements Fire Department to find out. There's a unit in here that is driven by a motor. It's much like a turbine in a jet aircraft. And when this unit goes around, it sucks air in the front, chops it into little pieces, little bursts of air, just like a whistle does, and blows it out the side. The faster this goes, the higher the sound. The tornado siren on, in the field is mounted on a phone pole, and it rotates 360 degrees, and it just keeps rotating for its entire run, so it points its megaphone at people and houses and so on and so forth in the area. The siren will run for three minutes. It can be restarted at any time for additional three minute runs. It's important to recognize that the siren system is designed to be an outdoor warning siren system. If you're in your house, you have your TV on, you have your stereo turned up, you have your uh, iPod in your ear, you're not gonna hear the system. A situation is observed. Uh, we have a wall cloud approaching, train spotters have seen rotating cloud masses. National Weather Service has announced that uh, there is severe weather in the area. All of these are trigger issues. The state of Michigan has the Law Enforcement Information Network. They can send a message out that way. Of all those triggers that are available, either Macomb County Central Dispatch will activate the entire county, or each individual entity, in this case Mount Clemens, has the ability to push their own button, activate their own sirens. They also can activate other entities as a backup function as well. A signal is sent from here or the county via radio to all the sirens. The sirens hear it and activate. FEMA has decreed that natural related emergencies, weather emergencies, whatever the case may be, are steady sounding noises. Man-made noises, i.e. aircraft attacks, and that's been expanded upon now to chemicals, hazmats, that kind of thing, are wailing sounds. Well, what it did is it allowed us to understand this, the system that we now have. Uh, it allows us to monitor the system 24-7 for any kind of problems and as was stated, it allows us to activate the system on our own should the county have a problem or one of the other backup systems have a problem. On uh, days of old, we had to rely on the monthly test to know if we had a problem. And we used to actually have to put people out at each siren location to physically watch the siren turn and listen for the audible alarm. Any problems that should arise with that system should show up on the computer here. So that definitely provides a much safer environment and a lot easier way for us to monitor the system. The siren system is tested typically on the first Saturday of the month, typically at 1 p.m. If it doesn't happen at exactly one o'clock, there can be a number of reasons. The county could be overwhelmed with an unrelated situation, whatever the case may be, that has their dispatchers tied up. There could be a situation where you have questionable weather already in the area. If the sky is already green, and cows are flying past the windows, yet we don't yet have a situation that is a defined tornado or severe weather event. The county is not going to worsen that situation by testing the sirens at that point. Well, obviously, it's the siren system is important to the community. You know, a lot of people, they hear it, they don't pay attention to it, but a lot of people do. And if uh, a test is late on a Saturday, that one o'clock test, it's nothing to get 25, 50 calls here at the fire department wondering what happened, so. Knowing that there are dispatchers monitoring the system to make sure it's working in case of an emergency makes me feel safer. I hope it makes you feel safer too. For Bassity Beat, I'm Dennis Kruger.